Why should your customers and prospects buy from you versus your competitors? The answer to that question is what is known as your competitive advantage or unique selling proposition. If you don't know the answer to that question, I guarantee you that your prospective customers won't know it either. If you don't know how to answer the question, why should your customers and prospects buy from you versus your competitors accurately, honestly, and concisely, then this video is for you. Transforming your business from struggling to success and from success to significance. Your competitive advantage is also known as your unique selling proposition or themes and discriminators. Whatever you call it, it answers the unspoken question that all customers and prospects have at one time or another. That question is, why should I buy from you versus one of your competitors? You need to be able to answer this question in a short, concise, and honest manner but also in a compelling way that will give your prospect the information they need to make an informed decision to buy from you and buy from you now. As we discussed in a previous video, your competitive advantage is an important part of both a business plan and a strategic plan. If we remember, I said that this was part of the plan that only you could write. I told you that if you hired this part out, that you would get junk in return. I said you could never hire someone to write this for you because if you don't know your competitive advantage, I guarantee you that they won't either. If you're watching this video, the chances are that you don't know what your competitive advantage is. Why do I say that? Because of all the companies that I have worked with, whether they were small startups or Fortune 500 companies, very few of them did, perhaps one in 50. So if you don't have a competitive advantage, don't despair. I'm going to show you how to fix that problem. It won't happen overnight, but once you understand what a competitive advantage is, how to go about developing one that meets six criteria, you will be in a position to become the dominant player in your market and perhaps even in your industry. On the other hand, if you continue to operate without a competitive advantage, then you will find yourself continuing to throw spaghetti at the wall, hoping that some of it sticks. Before going into the six criteria that make up a good, legitimate, competitive advantage, let's talk about bad examples of competitive advantages that are often used by salespeople when asked the question, why should I buy from you versus your competitors? Here's what they'll say. We are the best. We are the fastest. We are the most innovative. We are the smart choice. We have the best customer service. We are the lowest price. Why are these taglines bad competitive advantages? Well, let's see. Number one, they probably aren't true. Number two, your competitors are saying the same thing. The best competitive advantages are unique, something that your competitors can't legitimately say. The use of unsubstantiated superlative is a turnoff in this day and age to most prospects. They recognize puffery whenever they hear it. For they don't express your true strengths in light of your competitor's strengths and weaknesses. How can you say that you do something better than your competitor unless you've studied your competitor's strengths and weaknesses as well? Five, they don't reference your customer's needs or pain points. If your competitive advantage doesn't solve your customer's needs or pain points, then it's not a competitive advantage, it's just a strength of yours. With that said, now what makes a good competitive advantage and how do you go about developing one if you don't have one? I would say a good competitive advantage has the following six qualities. One, your competitive advantage will be one of your strengths from your strengths finder more on the strengths finder later. Two, your competitive advantage is something that you do better than your competitors. Now by saying that, it's not just what you believe, you believe you do it better, your customers believe you do it better, and your competitors believe that you do better. Number three, your competitors cannot honestly make the same statement at this time, perhaps in the past or in the future, but not at this time. For example, you were the manufacturer that won the J.D. Powers Award for Excellence for the last three years. That's something that's obviously based on the present. Your competitors may have had that award in the past. They may have it in the future, but they can't say the same thing right now, at least honestly and legitimately. Four, your competitive advantage meets the most important needs and pain points of your customers. Therefore, it requires you to know what your customers' needs and pain points 
And if not, if it doesn't meet their needs and pain points, then it's just an insignificant strength of yours. I say insignificant may be important to you, but it's not important to your customers. Number five, you can describe the pain point that your customers are feeling better than they can describe it themselves. It's almost as if you suffer from the same ailment that they have and you have found the medicine to make that pain go away. I once heard an advertisement for a company that helped people with IRS problems, and they described the problems of having levies, of hiding, of the embarrassment and everything else that goes with dealing with the IRS when you owe them back taxes. They described it so well, it was almost as if they had the pain point themselves. If somebody had that problem, they were probably picking up the phone and calling those people. That's the kind of understanding you want of your customers' needs and pain points that you can describe it better than they can themselves. And number six, a good competitive advantage will be so good that price is not an issue. It becomes immaterial. The customer is willing to pay almost any price to make that pain go away. You never want to be the low price leader at anything. You never want to be the person that's convincing people to buy your products and services because you're the lowest price. You want to be so good that you can claim to be the most expensive and people still rush to your door. Will all competitive advantages meet all six criteria? No. In fact, I've seen very few that do. But all good ones will meet at least two of them. One, you must have a legitimate strength that is better than your competitors. If you can't do something legitimate better than your competitors are doing it, then it's not a competitive advantage. And two, whatever that strength is, it must meet or exceed your customers' needs and their pain points. If it doesn't, it's just a strength of yours. So those two. So how do you go about developing a competitive advantage if you don't have one? Here we go. Number one, complete the strengths and weaknesses of the SWOT analysis. This is best done in a group setting. You want to look at your past successes and failures to see why these are strengths. For help on this, look at my book, Strategic Planning for Kingdom Businesses, or the, the video called SWOT Matrix Video. The SWOT Matrix is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. When you take the time to complete this, in, in a group setting and you do it right the way I described it, you will truly end up with verified, validated strengths. And the way you're going to validate them is going to look at your past failures and successes. And what you should find out is that your past failures lined up with your weaknesses. Your past successes lined up with your strengths. If they don't, I would say that you probably need to go back and redo your SWOT analysis because you probably claim things with your strengths that really weren't you these were things you wanted to be good at you were working on to be good at someday you they will truly be your strengths but right now they're not the second thing you need to do is you need to learn your competitors strengths and weaknesses by developing a competitive intelligence program see my book strategic planning for kingdom businesses or my video on competitive intelligence this will describe the best way to go about developing a competitive intelligence program that will tell you everything you need to know about the strengths and weaknesses of your competitors, what they're good at, what their secret sauce is, that will help you in writing your competitive advantage. Number three, you want to survey your customers to understand why they buy from you or your competitors, what need your products and services fill, and what needs are still unmet, and how you can do better. Find their pain points. Ask them why they buy from you. Ask them why they don't buy from others. Ask them about their previous purchasing experiences and how they went. Because at the end of the day, if you can get this information, what you're going to find out is their true needs and their pain points. Most salespeople are afraid to ask these questions. And I'm not saying you should ask these questions from every one of your customers. But these are the kind of questions you want to sit down with the customers you have a great relationship with. Ones that have been buying you from you for a while and ask them these questions. Because in the answers from them, you're going to find gold. Number four, figure out how to bring greater value to your customers, how to meet those unmet needs, how to solve their problems better than your competitors. What can you do better than anyone else to solve those customer pain points? If you take the time to analyze this, take the time to get to know your customers, you will have information that your competitors don't and you'll be able to truly write a true competitive advantage. And then number five, lastly, develop your strategic planning and marketing program around that competitive advantage that you just found. Hopefully this video has helped you understand the significance of having a true competitive advantage, why you need one, what happens if you don't have one, and how to go about developing a legitimate one. As I said, if you don't have one, 
you are in good company because most of your competitors either don't have one or haven't figured it out what it is yet. Learn to be strategic about your products and services, hence the importance of a strategic plan. Don't be like everyone else and hope that some of that spaghetti that you're throwing at the wall will eventually stick. Some of it will, but most of it won't. If this video has been of some help to you, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below. If there are any other topics you'd like to see discussed relating to strategic planning, please let me know. Until then, be blessed and keep doing business his way.